All right, so this is going to be my first video documenting my game development process. I'm making a video game where you play as an apothecary of a, by our current standards, small town. I wanted to be able to show it in a video. I've been posting about my game on Facebook, but I figure you can see better through an interactive uh, images rather than just still frame. So because my game is still in progress, I'm going to be launching it through the uh, RenPy launcher. Got a flash screen. I did not add that silhouette, but I kept it because I thought it was kind of creepy. It made me laugh. I haven't done much editing of the title screen yet. It's just the basic title screen I'd whipped up for my quick start guide. If you look, you can see there's a CG gallery, which doesn't have anything in it just yet, and a BG gallery, which is full of all of the temporary kind of sketch replacement art that I have in the meantime. The BG and CG gallery I didn't program they were programmed by Leon, and then Leon gave me permission to use it in my quick start, and that's why I have it here. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game, and this is basically just testing stuff. So you're in your apothecary shop. A few things that you'll notice right off the bat, in the top left corner here, I've got a calendar. This shows the date, January 6th and Monday as well as a black, uh, this black kind of square right here is um, an image that displays the moon cycle. And here, um, and this calendar up here, uh, the base code for it was made by Zella from the Lemisoft forums, also used um, in my quick start with permission. And here we've got a um, it's kind of a time of day tracker, so I'm going to use this to keep track of how many actions the player has used in a given day. And then once all of those actions are used up, then it will proceed to the next day. Um, this is also used to keep track of any events that are time specific. For example, something that might happen only at night or only in the morning. Here we can have a look at the apothecary shop. Uh, the game is still very early development, so there's a, quite a long ways to go, but this is just my first installment. So um, one of the neat things I've got is an inventory. So the base uh, inventory system um, was programmed by a Saguaro on the Lemisoft forums. And as you can see, it has an inventory with hover images and tooltips at the bottom there. Um, so it'll say this is an empty bottle, and then it tells you the value of the bottle, and this is a thistle, what's the value of the thistle, etc. You can list them as a grid or in a list, as you can see here. When you have too many to fit on one screen, it gives you a scroll. And you can organize them by name, and ascending or descending. There we go. Ascending, descending. You can organize them by quantity, so how many you have. You have the most empty bottles, the least black rosaria. And you can order them by value. So the empty bottle costs the most, and um, all of the herbs really, I haven't set special values to them yet. So right now I'm just setting it to grid, because that's the easiest. By default, Saguaro's inventory system came with a crafting mode, so right in the inventory you can press the cap crafting button and gain access to the crafting mode. And then here it automatically populates itself with a list of all of the crafting recipes in the game. I am eventually going to remove this, but I'm keeping it now for testing purposes. Eventually there's going to be a short list of items that you can craft from your inventory, but just like Minecraft, it's going to be extremely restricted, and basically anything that you could reasonably expect to just put together with your hands and no other tools. 
putting that aside, let's look at the rest of the items in the apothecary shop. There's a couple of different things in the apothecary shop. This is the shop front, and as you can see, there's quite a, a few items available here to click. And you can also exit the shop front and go to the kitchen. I'll go ahead and go to the kitchen first because there's some things in there that will be needed before I show you the crafting table, for example. So if we go into the kitchen, different background as you can see, and there are two things that you can interact with. First is going to be the stovetop. If you click the stovetop, you get a permanent crafting screen. As you can see, um, it's just like the inventory screen, but there's no button to hide the crafting because it's just a permanent crafting station. And here you have a list of recipes that can be made at the kitchen. So right now, I just threw in a couple of random things, but eventually this will be populated with any kind of recipe that that requires a stovetop. All extracts will be here because they require boiling or, you know, tinctures or whichever. For now, it's just kind of this way because I needed to show that I could have a defined list. And eventually you also will be able to use the kitchen to like make soup or a couple of food recipes that aren't strictly medicine. But anyway, Moving along, the other thing that you uh, can interact with in the kitchen for now is uh, this little door, and if you click on it, it leads you to the root cellar. By the time I finished drawing this background, I was tired and I did not want to populate it with jars, but eventually it will be more populated with jars and various tools that you might store in extra storage space. I'm also considering eventually making this selectable, where you can either use this as storage, or you could put things into these shelves that you want to keep in a dark cool place for fermenting, for soaking herbs in oil to make herbal oil, that kind of deal. Right now, the only thing that's functional about this room is the water trough, or the it's basically a indoor plumbing. You just have a little faucet here, and if you click on it, received bottle of water. You draw water from the fountain. The idea is that you have some high quality water hooked up in your house, because my setting has limited indoor plumbing. And I'm gonna click that a few times, and, oh, Okay, so now as you see, I collected five bottles of water, but it says you need a bottle to collect water. So it doesn't allow you to collect water unless you have some kind of container to put it in. So that's functional. And now if you look at our inventory, instead of the five empty bottles that we had before, we now have a five bottles of water, which is good because we need that to craft. Now that we have the bottles of water, I can kind of show you around the shop front a little bit more. One of the main things about the shop front is right here. You can see we have a table, and this is a crafting table. Eventually, I'm going to make this into multiple buttons where you'll have like a mortar and pestle on the table that can be used to crush herbs into powders. And then over here um, in the blank spot by the window, I'm going to put a drying rack where you can process fresh herbs into dried herbs, but for now I've just kind of got a crafting table that allows you to do all those things. Or, well, not powders and dried herbs, but to craft. So anyhow, you open up the crafting screen, and as you can see I have edited it a bit more. You have the same amount of sorting and different viewing and then the tooltip's still there, but what's different is that you have these basically pages where you can see the balms, the creams, extracts, oils, infusions, salves, and tinctures. If you look at the extracts page, there are some things that we can craft, right? And the formatting is a little bit off. I'll eventually make this into a full screen crafting 
table. That way we have more space for longer names, but, you know, for now, whatevs, it works. So if we see here, we have four thistles, and you click on the thistle extract. It says crafted thistle extract, and now we have three thistle thistles, where our bottles of water went down to four, and we have thistle extract, which is worth more than bottled water and more than thistles, but not a bunch more. And that is because of the tiered crafting system. If you look through the pages, you'll see that most of these, like oils, for example, they don't have that button, right? You can't craft this oil. And that's because we do not have oil, the correct ingredient for it. The way the craft screen is programmed, it will automatically show these tiny pictures of whatever ingredients make up the item. And you can kind of see, but not really, that these ingredients here are bold, right? And that these over here are not bold. Items that you have in your inventory show up as bolded, and ones that you are missing aren't. So right now, this is not especially useful because I have not colored or done the final art on all of these images, but eventually, once I have finished art, you'll be able to just look and tell at a glance kind of what items make up each recipe and whether you have it. I'll probably make the bolded, I don't know, more flashy or whatever. In any case, this is the, the basics of the crafting screen. Other items that are in the shop front, obviously, you can interact with the door. I'll show that last. If you click on these books over here, then you can see the encyclopedia. The original encyclopedia code, and I haven't modified it that much, but it was made by Human Bolt Diary from the Lemisoft forums. And what this does is it basically gives you this list of items here, and I'm going to program this to be like Medical Journal 1, Medical Journal Volume 2. It's various books that you will be able to collect. And then this is set so that some of them are locked if you haven't unlocked them, or in, in my game's case, eventually they're locked uh, if you haven't purchased or found them yet. And just like the inventory, you can sort it by number, by A to Z, Z to A, sort by subject, whichever. And then once you click on, say, Medical Journal Volume 1, then you get this screen. And it's going to have, in the future, a, like a botanical diagram of the plant showing its roots, its stem, seeds, flowers, uh, maybe a bisection of its fruit, just whatever. And then if you look over here, you can see that there's like a scroll bar where you can add a description and talk about the plant's various medical properties. So up here it will say Medical Journal 1, and then each entry will be like a page in the Medical Journal. So the other pages here just have stock images that the original program put in, but like you can kind of see that you would be able to flip through each page and see a new herb on each page. And that would be relevant to the story. You wouldn't be able to see any herbs unless you had a book that told you how to identify them. And then here you have these uh, drawers, and if you click on them right now, this is where I have the storage chest. So I have one black rosaria, I have placed it into the storage chest, and it is gone from my inventory. You can also transfer money, so like 50. Transfer. And then you can take money out. It's very nifty. Sanguaro's code is, is really nice. So, leaving that back in my inventory. I've done most of the work inside of the apothecary shop, but there's also a couple of things that you can do on the outside. So if we click the door, it brings us to the first overworld map. You can see a couple of houses light up, as well as this forest. Um, in the future, I'm going to make it so that when you hover over a house, it shows like a label, so you can see what you're clicking on. Seems pretty basic, but it'll be there. So this right here leads to your apothecary shop. 
and going in and out of the apothecary shop does not take any time. As you can notice, it is still sunrise. However, going into this place, which is the item shop, once you leave, it will take up a period of time. So this is just a generic shop. Right now, the only thing you can do, you click the counter, and it brings up the item shop page. And you can buy a couple of different herbs. We've got a couple of, like nuts here, some bandages, empty bottles so that you can get more water, um, a bottle of oil that's useful, and some beeswax, also very useful for our purposes. You can get a couple of empty jars, some wine, and tins, and that will allow you to make tinctures, balms, and creams, respectively. Now that we have some new items, um, oh, you can also sell things, but uh, if you notice, the bottle of oil is worth 375 if you sell it back, but a bottle of oil is 500 if you purchase it. So buying something from the shopkeeper, um, they won't just give you the same amount back. They deduct because it's considered used, just like a regular shop is not going to buy things from you the same price that they would sell it. And you can see that when you hover over in the little tooltip at the bottom there. Going back, you would click the Leave Shop button, because the door there obviously leads into a back room, not outside the shop. And we can go back to our crafting table. You can see we can still craft some more types of extracts, and we can make a couple different kinds of oils. So if we want to make crown oil made with the crown flower, we have one crown flower, we have enough oil, click on this, ah, you made crown oil. And I just call it crown oil instead of crown flower oil to save space, so you notice that the marsh marigold items became marigold, black rosaria became rosaria, and crown flower became just crown. It was just bothering me having them constantly, like, squished and ruining the formatting. But once I make it full screen, that'll be fixed. Anywho, so one thing that is nice to notice, if we craft Thistle Abstract, notice that the border around it is blue. So now if we go into, let's see, a tincture, a tincture takes wine and then some kind of extract. So if we're gonna make a thistle tincture, the outline is purple, right? And that's because it is a second tier crafting item. So it's basically the f items that haven't been crafted and are just base items have an outline in green. And then items that have been crafted from base items are blue. And then items that are crafted with already crafted ingredients turn purple, and then I have other tiers above that. It's just kind of like a, an easy way to tell how high caliber of an item you have made. And then you can see that your new items show up here, and you can make a balm, again with the purple outline, and yeah. So I think that's about what is there. And then also you notice, because we left the item shop, it has proceeded from sunrise into morning. So going back out, the last thing to show you is the forest. So if you click on the forest, it brings you to a whole new overworld map. The uh, overworld map has a lot of different little areas that you can click, one kind of hiding up here behind the calendar. And that's mostly because I wanted you to have the ability to have a lot of variety in your herb gathering, right? So at each of these places, let's click this one, right? So we see five different herbs, right? And we've got some blackberries, some garlic, some oak bark. I think that's a laurel and then the Nanayuraha flower. And it says here, your random number is three, right? So let's leave the forest and go back. Your random number is five, and now we have some different herbs showing up here. So now we've got the dandelion, the oak has moved from the center over to the left, we have a crown flower, the garlic has also moved, and we've got black rosaria. So another uh, thing about this is if you collect all of these, 
So the black risotto, the garlic. You can see that green border I was talking to you about before. And you leave the forest and go back. There's still herbs here, but notice there's not five herbs, there's some missing. That's because it won't allow you to collect the same herb twice from the same area. And I might change it so that you might be able to collect two from of the same type, but, you know, we'll see. For now, it cycles through them, and you can't get the same herb twice. So, these are all new herbs that you haven't gotten from this exact same area. But it's not equal, right? Like, it's depopulated. So, the more times you go back, you're going to see new things, but you're also not going to get as many herbs because you've already picked some. And also, once I program in the, the plant identification guides that you can purchase, you might go and in the beginning of the game, you might only see one or two herbs anywhere. And then as you learn to identify, or it, it also could depend on the area, like one area might have some more low-level herbs, and another area has more instances of high-level herbs. So in the beginning, you know, you come and you see, oh, this area has more herbs and the other areas are all empty. But then as you learn to identify more plants, those plants start showing up. And you can see it's turned to sunset up here now. So we're going to click on these and then leave the forest. And our random number is a different random number again. It's four, so there's a laurel and a thistle. Note, it was night. And then we leave the forest, and it tells you, hey, it's getting late, better head home. And then you wake up in your shop at sunrise the next day. And now you go back, and all of these herbs are back, right? So every time the next day proceeds, the herbs refresh. So we can go and pick all of these again. And as you can see, we go back, and some of them are missing, and we can keep doing this. I've only gone to that one section because this forest section is the one that I've been doing testing, so it has the most advanced code out of all of them. Some of these others, I haven't placed the herbs at the proper locations yet, so you'll see them like floating in the air and that kind of stuff, but each area has its own unique background. As you can see, like this one has some water because it's meant to be partly swamped and you'll find different things like the marsh marigold you will find in the swampy area, but not the regular forest. And some of these, like, I don't think I've placed them properly here yet, but any of them that are showing up in the water would be lilies, but I haven't drawn any lilies yet. So yeah, you've got a bunch of unique forest backgrounds, stuff floating in the air until I figure out where to put them permanently. But if you noticed back in the shop, there were some nuts, um, and so I was planning to either have the nuts laying on the ground or have the whole tree be a button that would light up, and then you can uh, shake the tree by clicking on it, and then you get a nut. Or there might be trees that have like like a siphon where you could collect sap, or you might have some trees that would be able to gather latex, which is something that I'm excited about. But yeah, that shows the basics of what I have with the game so far. You can see since it's proceeded to the next day, it's now January 8th, and the moon is no longer a new moon, it is a quarter. And I'm just gonna keep on adding things, but I hope the video gave you a bit of a better understanding of where I'm at in game development compared to just a bunch of screenshots. Thanks for listening to me ramble and following my game development process.